As I was meditating on the gospel, which we've just heard as my way to prepare for this preaching, the question came to my mind, why did the evangelist, why did St. Mark remember this miracle? Among all the other ones that occurred, why was this written down? You remember at the end of St. John's Gospel, St. John says, there are also many other things that Jesus did, but if these were to be described individually, I do not think that the whole world would contain the books that would be written. For all the months, the years that Jesus ministered, there was so much he did. And so the question that provoked my meditation was, why remember this healing? I could almost imagine the catechetical group around Mark, you know, tradition is that he was one of the 72 disciples and a, a co-worker, both of Paul and Peter, had a lot of, you might think of him as somebody like Father Mech, who works along with me. And you can imagine, maybe the children, maybe the adults in the, in the RCIA program saying to Mark, tell us that one again about the leper. We want to hear that one. This healing of the leper is recorded by St. Mark under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit for you and me. We need to hear about what Jesus did for the leper because it really is about us as well. And so this morning, I'd like to help us to take hold of the grace that's offered to us by hearing this gospel, hearing St. Mark once again tell the Christian community that one about the leper. I think it's important that we all hear this gospel, that we know about this healing that Jesus performed, because this miracle is very much a powerful sign. You know, signs work in a very, if you begin to think about it, almost mysterious way because when the sign presents itself, it presents more than itself. Think about the, the compassionate touch of, of a mother as she soothes the forehead of a feverish child. There's a lot more going on there than just giving comfort. That's a sign of a, of a whole reality. Or when married couples hold hands, sometimes when they don't hold hands, those are signs, expressions of something that's much more significant than what's immediately present. And this miracle, as far as I understand it, is a sign for us. That's why we need to hear it. That's why the Holy Spirit moved St. Mark to record it. See, because this leprosy is not a disease like others, it's not like being crippled, not like being blind. The disease of leprosy in the Old Covenant, in our Lord's time, made a woman or a man impure unclean. And so besides the pain of the illness, there was what often was an even greater hurt, a, a greater wound of being cut off. Cut off from one's family, cut off from one's community, cut off from the whole people of Israel, and cut off from God himself because the leper was not allowed to come and pray in the temple or in the synagogue. 
The temple, the leper was even isolated from God himself. And so, in this passage, leprosy is a sign of sinfulness. Not that the leper committed sin and was thereby punished, but in his, his state is a sign for the state of every sinner. And so, in healing the leper, Jesus is really presenting himself as the one who heals us from sin, the one who forgives, the one who reconciles, the one who tears down barriers that are caused by sin and brings us back into fellowship, into communion. He restores our communion by forgiving us because our sin separates us one from another, and he restores our communion with himself and his Father in the Holy Spirit. We are made fit to worship God, to receive his love, and to reciprocate with his love. And so, the account of the healing of the leper is my story, and it's your story too. That's why we need to hear it. Because it's a word not about something just that happened way back then. It's a word about what's happening now in my life, in your life. The healing of our isolation caused by sin. And I think it's particularly providential that we should hear this gospel and meditate on it on this Sunday, which is just, what, three days before Ash Wednesday. That time that begins, Lent, that time in which we're renewed in our determination to let Jesus heal us of our sin, of our spiritual leprosy, I would suggest for you three themes that you and I might meditate on in the next few days in light of this gospel miracle. First of all, bring our sins to Jesus. Second, show our sins to Jesus. And third, entrust our sins to Jesus. Bring our sins to Jesus. We need to acknowledge that we can't heal ourselves of our sinfulness. There is about in our culture uh, a lot of themes about self-improvement. If you just put yourself on that Nordic track, you're going to become some super guy, super woman. Sin doesn't work that way. We need the Lord Jesus. We can't heal ourselves. Second, we need to show our sinfulness to Jesus, just like the leper did. He came to Jesus and showed him this affliction. We need to honestly tell Jesus about our sin, not that he doesn't know what it is, but part of renewal, part of repentance, is to acknowledge what's really wrong. Perhaps my sinfulness is usually gossip, simple one. Why do I gossip? What's at work? Do I not trust God? Do, do I feel it's important to hurt other people in order to build myself up? I mean, that's one small example. But each of us needs to look at her or his heart and identify what the leprosy is and where it comes from and bring that honestly to Jesus in prayer. Not be afraid. Say to him, this is what, I, this is what you get. You called me. Here I am. I got junk. I'll show it to you. Because the first point is, I can't heal myself. Only he can do it. And the third reflection is we have to entrust our sins to Jesus for healing. 
The healing that the Lord brings is not a kind of legal amnesty where he simply writes on a piece of paper, okay, I'm going to treat you like you're not guilty anymore. That's not how Jesus shows mercy. That's not how he heals. But the healing of Jesus, the gift of his mercy for our spiritual leprosy is to change us, to unleash in our hearts and minds the Holy Spirit who gets to the very root of our sinfulness. Perhaps it's pride. Perhaps it's greed. Perhaps it's a failure to trust Jesus completely. That's healed at the very root when we open ourselves to the power of grace, the power of the Spirit. And even more, here's the best part of the good news. Why Jesus is not just a Savior, but the true Savior. When we give our sinfulness over to him, he changes it into something that will bring forth good fruit. A simple example. If in my sinfulness I, I present to Jesus my failure, one of the great fruits that comes from that is my humility. That's a blessing, to be humble in front of Jesus and to be open to him and to receive from him what I need. God is glorified when we let him heal us of our sin. We entrust to Jesus our sinfulness for healing because it makes everything better. And so, as we move forward to Ash Wednesday, I'd like to suggest two actions for all of you. First of all, when you come to Ash Wednesday, be ready to make an honest and realistic promise to repent. If you are blessed to be able to receive ashes on Ash Wednesday, or if you can't and you keep Ash Wednesday at home, think about these three themes that I have presented to you and make them part of your Lenten resolution. And the second action as, a, as your pastor that I would recommend to you is resolve to go to confession in Lent, to make a good confession, an honest confession, a confession that's as realistic and full as the Holy Spirit gives you the light to confess. Because confession is especially the way that Jesus has established to heal us of our leprosy, for us to go to the priest who is the impersonation of Jesus and say, if you will, you can make me clean. And then to hear the great, the joyful expression that just imagine what happened when the leper heard this. We hear it too. When the priest says, I absolve you from your sins. That's Jesus saying to us, I do will it, be made clean. So, there's a lot ahead of us in the 40 days of Lent, but that's for then, for now, for this hour. What we're called upon to do is to offer that holy sacrifice by which Jesus has reconciled us to one another and to his Father. And to give God thanks that we're in recovery from our spiritual leprosy. To give God thanks that we can be one with one another in giving God the Father praise together with Jesus in the power of the Spirit and to give God thanks that we have communion 
oneness with him that begins in this world and will, by his grace, last for all eternity.